The Pokemon anime is the longest running TV adaptation of a video game ever made. Not including spin offs or movies, there have been 23 seasons, 1,189 episodes, and the show is still releasing episodes to this day. Season 1 alone is 89 episodes long. My normal format is not going to cut it this time. Not to worry though, because there's a certain ageless protagonist who needs to be put in his place, and now seems like the perfect time to do it. Ash Ketchum. Known in Japan as Satoshi, after Pokemon's creator, Satoshi Tajiri. Unlike the games, which introduce new protagonists with each major instalment, Ash and his Pikachu have been the stars of the anime since day one. And in a very Bart Simpson-esque fashion, Ash's age exists in a constant state of flux between 10 and 12, leaving him with a very spotty memory about his past adventures. This often leaves Ash in situations where he can't remember fundamentals about Pokemon training, which can be incredibly frustrating for longtime viewers. Some would argue that this is a necessary setback to keep the show accessible for new viewers, but considering that Ash often travels with inexperienced new trainers, his continued role as a clueless bumbler just doesn't work for me. By the time he reached Hoenn, Ash could have been a mentor to his peers. But that's not the issue I have with Ash, god no. What bothers my inner bureaucrat is that Ash shouldn't have been eligible to compete in the Indigo League in the first place, and the only way to validate this claim is to revisit his performance against the Kanto Gym Leaders. The first example of this is against the Pewter Gym Leader, Brock. This match is for Pokemon League authorization. There are special rules. Given his inexperience, Ash took on the rock and ground type gym leader using a Pikachu, despite the blatant type disadvantage. After a prompt surrender, Ash then conspired with Brock's father to artificially enhance his Pikachu. This seemingly painful process already pushed the boundaries of ethical trainer behaviour, but, if you'll excuse the pun, it was Ash's subsequent victory that will truly shock you. Take a chew! As you can see here, one of Pikachu's discharges of electricity set off the gym's sprinkler system, and Ash capitalised on this happenstance by unleashing an attack in order to defeat the weakened rock type. Now some of you watching this scene are probably curious as to why a building made entirely out of rock needs a sprinkler system. Well, the answer is quite simple. The building is not exempt from fire safety compliance. As such, this incident should have immediately cancelled the match and forced everyone in attendance to leave the building in a safe and orderly fashion. Instead, this exchange happened. Winning the match because of that wouldn't have proved anything. Next time we meet, I'll beat you my way, fair and square. Now this is where things get a little bit murky. Ash did in fact recognise that his victory wasn't truly earned, and he willfully surrendered. But in response to this act of humility, Brock simply handed Ash the boulder badge anyway. He also resigned as gym leader, and joined Ash as a travel companion, which further muddies the waters of whether or not this was an acceptable action. Maybe as a one-off this could have been overlooked, it was Ash's first badge, but in the next gym, a similar event occurred. Here in Cerulean City, we can... Wait a second, are those real fish? Like, normal, non-Pokemon fish? Oh god, what the... Oh no, the, the timelines! They're converging! Here in Cerulean City, we can find an example of truly negligent behaviour on the part of the three leaders, Lily, Violet and Daisy. A Cascade Batch, this is what you want, right? You can have it. After enduring a string of losses, 
they simply begin giving badges away to prospective challengers, completely undermining the league's integrity. Thankfully, their younger sister Misty was able to accept Ash's challenge in their stead, setting Ash back on the intended path of personal growth and developments. But even this gesture proved to be in vain due to yet another unfortunate incident. Ah! Our swimming pool! They're sucking it dry! Yeah! Going by the books, this interruption from a group of criminals, who I'm sure we'll never see again, should have led to the cancellation of this gym match. Instead, Ash was awarded the Cascade Badge for saving the gym. And while this is a better reason than Brock had for bestowing a badge, the surrounding circumstances still beg the question as to how legitimate Cerulean Jim is. I personally feel an investigation is in order, with the leaders seeming more interested in using the venue for live shows over battling, the gym classification might just be a ploy to earn a tax break. Two towns over in Vermilion City, we can observe the opposite problem, with an overzealous electric leader sending his challenger's Pokemon into intensive care. Thankfully, the League doesn't accept liability for such injuries. After a crushing one-on-one -on -one defeat at the hands of Lieutenant Surge's Raichu, Ash promptly rematched and defeated Surge, making for his first hard-earned legitimate victory. As proof of your victory, a Thunder Badge! Thank you. Now, up to this point, a lot of my criticisms have been levied towards Ash, with an occasional nod towards the corrupt practices of the leaders he's faced. But regarding the Marsh Badge, we should fully address that Psychic Sabrina is not fit to represent the League as a gym leader. Allow me to list her transgressions. Number 1. Attempted Murder Number 2. Abuse of Staff it's not my place to decide whom you battle! <laughs> Number 3. Unlawful Entrapments <laughs> Number 4. More Attempted Murder We're gonna get squashed! <laughs> Number 5. Misinformation by means of a related third party if you capture a ghost Pokemon from Lavender Town, you might have a chance. <laughs> and number six, more unlawful entrapments. It's fun to catch them! The exit! Only by appealing to her humanity did they survive this encounter, and by this point, the unearned gym badge isn't even my primary concern. Clearly, this dangerous woman can't be given a formal dismissal, as that would likely get somebody killed. The only way to close her operation here would be to send in some form of elite anti-psychic fighting force. Or perhaps a trained assassin wearing a tinfoil hat. Ash's acquisition of the rainbow badge, however, can be heavily scrutinized. Before even attending the grass type gym, he was banned from the premises for disrespecting the gym staff, having insulted them for manufacturing and selling perfumes. Perfume's just a waste of money and it stinks! Go away! This ban fell strictly within their rights, as part of the League's zero abuse policy. And instead of issuing any form of apology, Ash literally conspired with the aforementioned group of criminals and attempted to dupe the gym by donning a disguise and competing regardless. After his disguise slipped, he issued a challenge which leader Erica begrudgingly accepted, only for Ash's criminal accomplices to interrupt the match with an extreme act of domestic terrorism. And last but not least, to blast this dump sky high! Jesse! <laughs> Between the life-threatening risk and the severe property damage, Ash 
probably should have been sent to a juvenile detention centre for this. Or at least have had his Pokemon training licence revoked. But in a severe lapse of judgement, Erica bestowed Ash the Rainbow Badge as thanks for rescuing her Gloom. The very same Gloom who Ash endangered in the first place. Ash's battle against the poisonous ninja, Koga, seemed to go relatively smoothly at first, but was interrupted by... Prepare to fight! Yeah, that's right! The very same group of criminals. This seems like something that needs to be solved with police intervention. After these criminals were forcefully evicted from the building, Ash challenged Koga to a rematch and actually won fairly, rightfully claiming the Soul Badge. Ash's match in Cinnabar against Blaine was particularly enlightening. Midway through their first fight, Ash sent out his Charizard, who refused to fight. The reason for this is that the Cascade Badge, Rainbow Badge, and Marsh Badges are all required to train highly leveled Pokémon acquired from other trainers. And since Ash didn't win any of those badges fairly, his Charizard stopped following orders. Also, Ash pulled this stunt, defying all known laws of physics. After forfeiting against Blaine's Magmar, Ash challenged him to a rematch. But recognising Magmar as a worthy adversary, Charizard took him on, in what might be, in my professional opinion, one of the sickest fight scenes in Pokemon history. As such, the Volcano Badge is the third and final Indigo League badge that Ash won fairly against a recognised qualified gym leader. I make that distinction because in the Viridian Gym, which already lacks legitimacy due to the leader's criminal ties and use of a mysterious bioweapon, Ash was made to fight one of the very same criminals who stalked him for the bulk of his journey, and in unsafe, unfair conditions. Taking the law into his own hands, Ash saw fit to seize the Earth Badge by force. And with that, my point is made. With only three Kanto badges earned through the proper means, Ash should not have been eligible to take on the League. But how did he perform in said League? The answer may surprise you. Or will it? Yes, it will. Breaking away from the conventional League structure of allowing all challengers to battle the Elite Four, followed by a match against a defending champion, the Indigo League instead began adopting an eight round long tournament structure, allowing more people the opportunity to compete for said privilege. A format such as this wouldn't be seen in the game until Pokemon Sword and Shield almost 20 years later. And because this tournament is heavily spectated and professionally refereed, Ash was forced to play by the rules here. These battles were to the point and no nonsense, with most matches being relative pushovers. That is, until Jeanette Fisher came along and gave Ash a scare using the world's strongest Bellsprout. But once he reached the fifth round, Ash's blatant disregard for League rules finally got the better of him. Forced to take on his friend and rival, Richie, Ash was pushed to his limit and sent out his disobedient Charizard, who, as per usual, refused to follow Ash's order. This got Ash disqualified, making for the first of many tournament losses in his long history. Some would interpret this as a lesson in accepting defeat graciously and bouncing back in the face of adversity. But to me, this is a lesson in humility. If Ash had simply followed the rules from the beginning, actually earning his badges and properly raising his team, this tournament may have panned out very differently for him. 
So taking off my stuffy, bureaucratic hat and stepping away from the bits, the writers of this show did in fact focus on giving Ash more character growth after this season. He gradually became less stubborn and obnoxious, earning more of his victories and taking his defeats in stride. But that said, I do sit in the camp of people who feel like Ash Ketchum is just going through the motions by this point. The character as we know him today could absolutely be retired. In Sun and Moon's finale, Ash finally won a regional tournament and became a champion, which could have been a fine send-off for him. On the bright side though, at least we have the spin-offs, which I'll probably get to in the future. For this week's Twitter poll, in honour of Ash Ketchum, I'm doing a loser's bracket, where the shows that previously earned the lowest number of votes will be served up for my next episode. So be sure to head over and pick your favourites. Special thanks go to my £3.62 patrons, Dan Brown, Pokepal, Shameboy and Thomas Walker. See you next time!